This is Swim Success with Music. Yo, what up, music fam? This is Walt. This is Success with Music. I am your music coach, and you are listening to the podcast for singers, songwriters, beat makers, music students. Hey, you know that we are all about that music life. I appreciate you tuning in to our episode again for this week, and I'm very, very happy today to have a guest on, and I'm going to talk about our special guest here in just a few moments. But as I mentioned in previous episodes, make sure you take the time now to subscribe to the podcast because we're dropping new content all of the time, and we have a new series coming out uh, in just a short while here. I want to make sure that you guys do not miss So make sure you go over to our website, which is successwithmusic.com. Subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe on your favorite platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever. Just follow us, man, and you'll get some great information. For today, I am very, very excited to have our special guest on I'm going to introduce him in just a moment, but I want you to really focus here in just a few moments, especially if you are someone who is putting out music for people to buy, for people to pick up, let's say, on the iTunes store, have them streaming on Spotify. If you're looking to get potentially maybe some type of signing deal with a a record label, if you're running your own indie label, the next few moments will help you take your songwriting and the promotion of your music to the next level. So yeah, man, let's uh, not wait around anymore. Let's get it. All right. So as I mentioned, today we have a special guest and our special guest and his name is Dave Esposito, expert music creator and the host of the Song Bro podcast. Yo, swim team. Here's Dave Esposito. Thanks for having me on the show, Walt. I'm excited to drop some wisdom on your listeners today. All right. So, Dave, tell our listeners about yourself and what you're doing over at Song Bro. Okay, so Songbro is a company I started. Basically, what we do is we do a weekly podcast where we review songs from indie artists, songs that are submitted to us on our website, mysongbro.com. And at the end of the month, we give out awards in categories like best lyrics, best singing, best instrumentation, best rapping, and best song overall. And the winner of best song becomes the artist of the month. And we do some cool videos like for the nominees of those awards, the winners, and another video for the artist of the month, which is really cool. It's a really cool promo video. And this idea for Songbro came after two other ideas that I had. Um, One back in 2014, I created a company called Fireback Records, basically kind of like a record label and a music promotion company combined. And then after a couple of years, I got into film a bit more and I decided to do a review company similar to Songbro, but it was called Boom Film Reviews. Boom. I I would say boom a lot. Um, So indie filmmakers would send their, you know, movies to me and I would review them on my podcast. And then I just had this idea to kind of combine the two ideas, you know? So that's how Songbro came about. So there's a real possibility that people in our audience are involved with all types of music styles and genres and stuff like that. So I want to have some advice that can be applied across the board universally. Dave, tell us what makes for a good song regardless of music style or genre. That's a good question. I would say it's rhythm and or melody. Those are the two elements that make a song great. Um, When it comes to like rock and pop and dance, melody is really important, especially when it comes to the chorus, like the vocal melody. That's what gets people hooked. Also, you know, the instrumental melody that harmonizes with the voice. That's important. But rhythm is as well, because, you know, dance song, you need to be able to dance. So, the rhythm has to be there. When it comes to rap, you know, 
there's a lot of melodic elements in, in a lot of rap songs as well, because a lot of rap songs have, you know, like a singer in the chorus. Also, the synths need to have a good melody. But with rap, rhythm is kind of the primary thing, like the vocal rhythm from the, the, the rapper and how it flows with the beat. That kind of thing is very important. So those two elements, it sounds obvious, it sounds simple, but that's kind of where your focus needs to be. And, you know, sometimes we get a lot of song submissions where I'm just not feeling that melody or I'm not feeling the rhythm. And that's what that's what gets people to listen to your song more than once. And that's what everyone wants. You want your song to be a hit. You want people to listen to it over and over. I appreciate that. So let me give you the next question. I'm, I'm sure a lot of music creators and songwriters out there can identify with this next question. It's something I've um, encountered countless times in my career in, in making music. What advice can you offer song creators, songwriters, when they are at a loss for ideas? What in the world do you do when you have writer's block? I think writer's block is basically the result of two things. People being overly critical of themselves or overthinking the process. Okay. You know, people don't want to write something or create something that isn't good. So they don't, they get stuck. Like what, what's a good idea? Like, what should I do? Don't worry about that. Just create something, get it out of your mind that it needs to be good. Okay. Cause it can be bad. Let it be bad. If it, if it, if it's going to be bad, then that's okay because you're practicing. Okay. Here's a, an obscure example. Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers of all time. Know what he would do when he would practice? He would fight someone who was better than him at a certain area. And he would do terribly in training because he's, he's practicing what he's not good at. Okay. So what you're doing is practicing when you're creating. Don't, think this needs to be a hit song. Think of it as you're practicing, okay? And it might come out bad, but you know that's that's good. <laughs> you know, creating bad stuff can actually be good. A lot of artists do that. A lot of successful people create a lot of bad stuff first until they get to something good. Okay? So just make something. Don't just think, "Oh, whatever I write needs to be a masterpiece." Just just do it. Okay? And I've noticed because, you know, I've created a lot of songs, over a hundred tracks. And a lot of my best songs were done in one day. And a lot of my worst songs were done over a period of, you know, several months because I was overthinking. I was planning too much. And I was like trying to craft the perfect song. And a lot of times it doesn't work like that. You know, your creativity needs to just come out organically. Um, so sometimes I've just been like, I want to just create a song today. I want to do a full song right now. And that's where a lot of my best songs came out. And other artists say the same thing. There's an artist we've interviewed called, you know, Wide Eyes. And she had the best song of October, in my opinion. And she said she did that very quickly. She did not put a lot of, you know, thought into it. It just came out. Another artist, um, Sean Rubin, we interviewed him. He said that he writes every day. He seeks that inspiration. Um, and he just writes stuff, whether it's good or not, it's, he's practicing. And that's the key is to, to keep creating stuff. All right. Good insight. I appreciate that. All right. Let's move on to our next question. And that is, let's say I have the world's (laughs) next, you know, great hit on my hand or the next chart topper on my hands. What do I do? And, and I know a lot of us feels, you know, feel that we make bangers all the time. But seriously, if we really have a legit good song, I mean, we feel that it, it could be a, a, a breakthrough hit. What should we do next? How do we get it out there? How do we let the world hear about it? So the first thing I would do is get your music on all the different sites like SoundCloud, Apple Music, Bandcamp, Spotify. Get them all on there. Okay, I know some artists prefer one over the other, but listeners do too, and you want to reach all of them, or as many as possible, okay? So that's important. The next thing you should do is 
you know, it sounds obvious, but post them on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, get them on all those, okay? And a lot of these music sites that I was just talking about have features where you can kind of, you know, post your music to them, like on Instagram stories. Spotify has a feature, and so does SoundCloud, where you can link to the song. I think Spotify lets you play the song on the story, so you don't even have to link to it. So take advantage of stuff like that, okay? And also, create a video if you can. Um, it doesn't have to be like a huge production value, but as long as it's like a at least a lyric video, post that too. So, because video is popular in social media. And lastly, but not least, I would reach out to music blogs and radio stations and submit your song there because they reach a lot of listeners as well. So those are some great ways to do it. Um, and you may be asking, you know, how do you get them to all those different stations? Where do you find that information? Well, there's a company called Indie Bible. They have this resource. It's, it's a huge database of all that, all that information. And also venues, too, because you want to play your, your new songs live. That's another great way to get it out there. Okay? So... This resource has all that information. We're actually working with them. Um, so if you submit your song to us and choose either the six-week turnaround option or the two-week turnaround option for the song review, then you'll get a $10 discount on that. So check that out. And Dave, if some of our listeners have, um, if they missed this here, I'll, I'll state it directly. You are a music creator, but you are also a music marketer. You you are an expert in promotion. So here's the question. What is the biggest mistake a lot of musicians make when trying to promote their music? This is a great question. A very great question. I think the number one mistake a lot of artists make when it comes to promoting is not promoting, you know, <laughs> missing opportunities, missing or not recognizing the opportunity for for marketing yourself and your songs. For example, we give out awards every month, like I mentioned previously. Um, we also do interviews. We offer interviews to any artist who is nominated for an award. And a lot of artists don't do not do it. They just don't feel like it or they just forget to or they say they'll do it and they don't. That to me is not good, okay? Like, you have to take advantage of these opportunities to market yourself. When someone is nominating you for an award you have to put it out there some artists don't most of them do but some of them don't some don't say anything and they i give them award an award and they don't even share it or anything you need to share that kind of stuff you need to tell your fans that you know that you're awesome you know what i mean you got to kind of brag a little bit um an example of an artist that was really great about it is a, an artist called mcmr from a uh, rap artist from Florida. He's awesome. Um, he won like artist of the month one month. And what he did was he took some clips from the review that I gave him. Cause I said a lot of great things about him in the audio review. So he took some clips of that. He created his own promo video and he put clips from what I said into it. And it's, it was amazing. It was so great that, you know, we decided to do that for our artists every month. We create a little video with clips of my review and like some of their videos and stuff like that. And it's an awesome way to get your song out there because you're you're hearing praise and you're hearing the song and you're seeing the artist in action. So it's it's a great, great idea that we took from, you know, one of the artists. And I just thought it was such a genius marketing move because he was so proactive about it. You know what I mean? And that's the kind of thing you need to do. You got to be proactive. You got to recognize the, the marketing opportunities and capitalize on them instead of just letting them pass by and not doing anything about it. So that's the biggest mistake is, is not acting and not promoting yourself when there's an opportunity to do so. Yo, clearly there's a lot more, like a whole lot more that we can learn from Dave and Song Bro. So tell you what, I want to give the swim team here a new resource where they can listen to some additional information that will help them with their music success. Dave, tell our audience about how they can follow you and hear more about what you're doing out there. 
Awesome. Thank you all for having me on the show. Yeah, if anyone wants to follow Songbro, go to mysongbro.com and we're on social media.